All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the TMJ Show. Today, we are talking about step two CK and really how to get past anxiety and knowledge base necessary to really do well on the exam, especially as that test becomes more and more important. So I hope you guys enjoy today's episode. So today we have a question from one of our medical school uh, subscribers and listeners who's asked to keep it anonymous. So we're just gonna call him John Doe for the purposes of this question. But the question is basically in a nutshell, we failed steps two CK. And as you guys know, it is super, super important, especially as we get into in a situation where step one is becoming pass fail. Step two CK is going to become even more important. And so really the question is they had two options. They could either wait until the next kind of match cycle to take step two CK and then send those those new scores, ideally better scores, as a brand new application, or they could basically apply now, take two step CK again in kind of the midst before um, application season starts again, like interview season start, starts and then send out those results to um, the upcoming programs. And this student has decided to take out essentially the second option, which is to apply now, take the step to CK exam again, and then see what programs think with the new updated score. And so the really question is like, how do you prepare to retake step two CK? Um, it looks like they're taking it kind of in the midst of the month, so like October, um, and then how to deal with anxiety versus lack of knowledge. So this is a two part question. Now I agree with the approach of waiting or not waiting and just simply applying and then taking the exam and getting the score. Ideally, it would have been nicer to take the, the test a little bit earlier, um, but here we are now. So mainly just because as interviews are going out, you don't want to be in a situation where you're going to be costing yourself a score or waiting for people to really start evaluating you. Um, but we're going to say that you're starting to take this test in October, November, and then how you deal with a retake. So there is obviously a lack of knowledge if there is some idea or past history of failing. And so you want to make sure that you have some kind of system that every time you miss something, whether it be on your world um, or any other type of kind of practice questions or flashcards that you're doing, that you have kind of a gathering and a session every single day to avoid making those mistakes in the future. And so a great example is every time you miss a question on your world, obviously you mark it so you can come back to it later. But then you have a system where you're like, oh, if I miss a question, maybe I can put it into an Anki card or a Word doc or an Excel sheet. And I need to review that Excel sheet or that Word doc or those Anki cards for 30 minutes every single day. Because essentially now what's happening is yes, you have a lack of knowledge that's going to improve over time. But every time you miss a question, if your knowledge base of that missed kind of area of facts gets smaller and smaller and smaller, then you can go in the test day, at least with the confidence that you're definitely going to pass. Um, so that's number one, do more practice questions and then keep a system. And this is essentially how I study for step two CK is that I minimize how many resources I'm using and simply said, do as many questions as possible, make as many questions and mistakes as possible now, and then have a system where I can jot down what I'm missing and then review that as many times as possible and then repeat the process over and over and over again. Initially, we'll start doing, you'll miss a lot of questions over time. You'll start to see, oh. I've missed this before. I've missed something similar to this before, and I'm not going to miss it again. And then if you get it right, perfect. That means it worked. If you get it wrong again, that means there's a little bit of another nuance that you still didn't capture. You put that in the form of a flashcard or an Excel sheet or a Word doc or something else, and then you avoid missing it in the future. And that is essentially how you go from like a huge list of things that could trip you up on test day again to a much smaller list. Hey friends, hopefully you guys are enjoying today's episode. Now, if you're enjoying some of these strategies and you want basically all of the strategies that we have for medical school, studying productivity, stress management, doing well on your board exams, rotations, applying to residency, and so much more in one place, then definitely consider checking out the Med School Domination Bundle. It's by far our best seller that we have for you here at the MD Journey, and hundreds and hundreds of students have gone through it and gotten positive results. So if you're just curious of seeing what kind of results our past students have gotten, then click the link down below. If you're ready to get that unfair advantage of getting all the tips of things that you should and shouldn't do in medical school in one place, then definitely consider checking out the med school domination bundle. So that's how you deal with both lack of knowledge and also honestly a lack of anxiety or an increased anxiety. If you imagine that if you can minimize how many things could trip you up on test day, you feel more and more confident of doing so. And so I would recommend whatever study kind of schedule you put on, you do more of your time on doing as many questions as possible. And as you start to realize like what topics are really costing you the grade, so maybe you suck at cardiology, maybe you suck at pediatrics, guilty. <laughs> then what you're gonna do is as you get closer to actual test date, then you can have certain kind of blocks of questions dedicated to those things more often. And what I mean by that is if you have a three week or four week session where you're studying, and you realize that after doing two weeks of practice questions in your world, 
that your worst subjects, and even if those, they're all kind of not great, your worst subjects may be in cards, maybe in peds, maybe in infectious disease, then you can have specific question blocks in the day. So if you're gonna do two blocks of 20 every day, then one of your blocks can be on cards uh, on a Monday, the next block can be on infectious disease on a Tuesday, and then your second block of that day can just be random everything. So that way you get to see a little bit of a mixture of everything, but you have certain focus blocks that are designed for your weakest topics. And then again, if you miss questions from that cards block or that infectious disease, disease block, you put them into an Anki card, you put them into a flash card, you put them into an Excel sheet or a Word doc, and then you have a session the next day where you review for 30 minutes. This is how you minimize your anxiety. This is how you increase your fund of knowledge. And this is like the very simple model of saying, okay, these are the things I suck at. Here's how I'm going to review it. And again, the final step of this is as you start getting closer and closer to test day, if there are the same topics that you're struggling with, then you can go to a supplemental resource to really fill in the blanks. So if you're really struggling with cards, you can go watch those videos versus like watching all the videos and then hoping that you're certainly going to know all the topics. So for you, especially if you failed, I would do more questions and I would do an overview knowledge of watching as many videos or reading text and seeing how many makes mistakes you can make and then avoid making those mistakes in the future. Um, but that is basically how you improve your knowledge base, decrease your anxiety, and ideally set yourself up for a nice residency application. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will drop below um, any other links that we could possibly help you with. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and respond to the email, but hopefully this question and, uh, response helped you. And as always, thanks for adding your questions and thanks for being a loyal follower. All right, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode and really answering kind of a step-by-step -step approach of how to simplify the step two CK approach for an exam. That's extremely very important. If you guys have any more questions that you guys really know how to find me, either drop in the comment section if you're watching on YouTube or consider hitting that Q and a link down below to ask your own personalized question and having me record a video just like this one when I have time, of course, but then sending this response to you as well as making a general video for the general public. In addition to asking your question, if you really want that one-on-one -on -one help, personalized kind of advice, walking you through, holding your hand, and basically just telling you like, this is how you go from a struggling student to one who is doing well and has a lot of free time. If you wanna see some examples of what those students will look like, then check out some of our Medic Knight students who have gone through our program and after just a week or two of our calls, are really starting to see dramatic changes in their grades, their efficiency, and most importantly, their happiness and stress level. So if you wanted to see what those results are, just out of curiosity, that link down below. And if you want to consider joining our programs and consider applying to the Medic Knight program, it is an application only based program. But if we feel like we can help you, then definitely we'll reach out and seeing if we can find a way to step by step work with you on a variety of plans on either a four week, eight week or 12 week plan as the making of this episode. So if you guys are interested in going from that student that you currently are to the student you have the potential of being and revealing even how further you can go, then definitely consider checking out the Medic Knight program. Now, if you want more of a DIY, do it at your own pace, then definitely check out some of our other programs, which I'll also link down below for you. But with that being said, guys, if you are watching this on YouTube, consider hitting that like button and the subscribe button as well as notification bell to be notified when new episodes just like this one go out. If you have any more questions, either drop in the comment section down below or hit that Q&A link to ask your own personalized question. I'll try to get them as soon as possible. It takes me some time. But as always, guys, thank you so much for making to the very end of the episode. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys in your journey. Thanks for being a part of mine. If you guys did enjoy this episode and on YouTube, you can click right here or here to check out this video on how to study using Anki like a pro and how to study for medical school step by step. Those will also be linked down below for you guys on the podcast. But as always, thanks for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.